I work at CERN. CERN is a place a few kilometers from here where 15,000 scientists from more than 70 countries come to do research. It is the largest particle physics laboratory in the world. It is also home to the most powerful particle accelerator in the world, the Large Hadron Collider, called the LHC. So in the LHC, in the LHC, in the LHC, we accelerate tiny particles called uh, protons uh, close to the speed of light. We make them collide in order to study what happens. So in these first uh, 30 seconds, I guess I got you all worried uh, that you braved the snow, came to a school on a Saturday to listen to a physics lecture and not a TEDx talk. <laughs> That's not my intention. So what I'd like to do now is bring you for a quick ride uh, through CERN, because CERN is an amazing place, you know, even if you're not truly interested in physics. I don't see why you shouldn't, but in case. <laughs> First of all, uh, CERN, what we do at CERN is uh, really huge uh, in terms of everything. The LHC itself uh, is housed uh, in a circular tunnel 27 kilometers long, uh, located 100 meters below ground uh, under the Pays de Jax region. In the places uh, where we make the protons collide, uh, we install uh, what we call uh, particle detectors. They are sort of giant 3D cameras uh, that help us uh, to see what happens during the collision. When I say giant, uh, this is what I mean. Uh, you see the little man standing there. Uh, this is the largest of the particle detectors. Oh, sorry. Uh, that's not working. OK, so this is the largest of the particle detectors uh, at the LHC. It stands at 25 meters tall, 46 meters in length. The heaviest of these detectors weighs uh, 14,000 tons. It's two Eiffel Towers put together. Um, also, at CERN, the other keyword is uh, fast. In one second, it's less than the time it takes you to snap your fingers, uh, one proton will go around uh, 27 kilometers of the LHC 11,000 times. It's the fastest race track on the planet. In this same uh, one second, again, these detectors, uh, our uh, 3D cameras, they take up to 40 million photographs of particle collisions. And our data center every day crunches more than one petabyte of data. It's more than 200,000 DVDs. There's plenty of TV series to watch on huh, that. So what do we do at CERN with all of these uh, impressive technologies and numbers? Well, first of all, I'd like to ask you, hmm, maybe what do you know about CERN? It's not going to be an interrogation, don't worry. So how many of you have heard that CERN has discovered something called the Higgs boson? Oh, we are skewed here. Huh? That's, uh, you put me at a test, I guess. How many of you have heard that CERN might create uh, a black hole that could uh, destroy our planet? Uh, you're joking, but the internet is full of this stuff. Huh? So <laughs> How many of you have heard, uh, uh, watched this movie or read the book, uh, and they think that we might be hiding uh, an antimatter bomb in a secret lab uh, somewhere? OK, so these three things, uh, actually, the only the first one uh, is connected uh, to what we do every day at CERN, and is it uh, the discovery of the Higgs boson. For the rest, uh, no black holes and no secret lab uh, with antimatter bombs uh, hidden. Although I can say, and you'll allow me a physicist uh, joke for once, uh, antimatter is everyday matter at CERN. We do produce uh, antimatter uh, in our experiments, just in teensy tiny quantities, uh, so it's nothing to be worried about. So what do we actually do? What is uh, our business at CERN? Uh, we do something that is called basic science. Basic science is really deeply rooted in curiosity. Basic science wants to understand uh, how things work and why, and is not interested in uh, the immediate applications. Uh, and this is opposed, uh, if you want, to what is called applied science. Applied science takes scientific discoveries and uses them to solve practical problems. I'll make you an example that has nothing to do with physics. Um, trying to understand how the human body produces cholesterol, that is uh, basic science. Using this knowledge to devise uh, a medication that will keep your cholesterol level at bay, this is applied science. The type of applied science that we do at CERN is called uh, particle physics. It's a special branch of physics, uh, and we study what are called uh, subatomic particles, uh, particles smaller than the atoms. There's a whole uh, zoo 
of these particles. And uh, some of them, you probably have heard them uh, one way or another, electrons, protons, quarks, uh, new even neutrinos, they're now quite familiar. Others, they're still uh, very exotic sounding, pions, muons, uh, neutrons. Uh, CERN's business for more than 60 years has been studying these zoo particles and also finding new ones. The Higgs boson that I was mentioning before uh, was discovered in 2012, and that was a major scientific discovery. Not only because this particle is really crucial to our understanding of nature, but also because it had been a 50 years long hunt for it. And at the end, uh, this was worth a Nobel Prize uh, for the two physicists uh, who had first uh, come up with uh, the theory of the Higgs boson in 1964. Now, the how all these particles uh, relate to you? Why should you be interested in particle physics beyond uh, you know, simple curiosity? Can this particle uh, change your everyday life? Can the Higgs boson make your smartphone uh, you know, better, faster, cheaper, everything that you want? But now, maybe you'll be surprised to find out uh, that a lot of the technologies that we develop for uh, particle accelerators, detectors, computing tools, uh, they actually have already changed uh, our life and they keep changing it. Most, if not all of you, use a certain invention every day, several times a day probably, and maybe you don't even know it. Do you know what it is? The World Wide Web. WWW has become uh, familiar to all of you. It was invented at CERN in 1989 by a British scientist, Tim Berners-Lee. And the reason for this invention is because uh, CERN scientists at the time were struggling to find an easy way to share information, an ever-increasing amount of information among them, and also with their fellow scientists across the world. And there was nothing available, you know, something that they could just uh, download, install, and use. So Tim Berners-Lee came up with the World Wide Web as an answer to a need uh, from the scientific community without knowing uh, that this would have changed uh, society forever. And this keeps happening at CERN. Every day, we have to come up uh, with bespoke solutions for our needs, uh, because there's nothing out there uh, that would just do the job. And a lot of our technologies, uh, they find uh, another life uh, outside of the restricted world of particle physics and into society, in fields that uh, are sometimes uh, very close uh, to us and very important, like medicine, for example. So you might wonder, where are these technologies? There are. Uh, 30,000 particle accelerators in the world. Of these, uh, only a handful are used uh, in particle physics and nuclear laboratories. More than 7,000 are used uh, in medicine. And where are they? Yeah, they're not as big as the LHC, of course. Otherwise, uh, you would have noticed no? 27 kilometers ring uh, all over the place. They are in hospitals. They are used uh, to treat cancer, among other things. Uh, whenever you hear that someone has cancer and is being treated with radiotherapy, this means uh, that actually the tumor is being irradiated with a beam of particle that is produced by an accelerator. And do you remember the particle detectors I was mentioning before, uh, our giant 3D cameras? Well, one of the technologies uh, that is uh, used in these particle detectors uh, is actually at the heart of the medical imaging device uh, that is called a PET scanner. And PET scanners uh, are uh, unique tools uh, for doctors uh, to diagnose cancer, to look for metastasis, but also to study degenerative diseases of the brain, like Alzheimer and dementia. And if these scanners are getting better and better, uh, it is also because uh, particle physics keeps demanding and developing better and better detectors. So I've been talking about technology now. Uh, if you've been following, the original question was not about technology. It was about the physics discoveries. It was about, can these particles, can your discoveries at CERN, can the Higgs boson change my life, uh, have an impact on uh, my life every day, make my smartphone better, smarter, cheaper? The first answer is that it might take time. Uh, I like to make the example of uh, Einstein's relativity theory. So one century ago, this was considered a beautiful but very abstract mathematical theory with no relation whatsoever with uh, your uh, everyday life. 
And now the GPS that we use every day can tell us where we are with so much accuracy, precisely because we know how to deal with re relativistic effects. And let's take also antimatter. So far we've seen antimatter in science fiction books and movies and in places like CERN, which looks like science fiction as well. But actually, you find antimatter also in hospitals. When I spoke about PET earlier, I didn't tell you what PET stands for. PET is an acronym that means positron emission tomography. The positron is the antimatter particle of the electron. And so you, s you find uh, a medical application of a physics discovery. The truth is, uh, I cannot tell you, um, we will never know until we find uh, some practical application of the Higgs boson, how it can be useful for you. And it might turn out uh, that it can't. It will just not have uh, any practical use. And the message I want to put forward today is that this is still fine, you know. Not everything has to have an immediate practical use. And if you're tempted uh, to dismiss uh, basic science uh, as you know, useless, uh, I would really like you to think twice, because giving up on basic science uh, would also mean giving up on curiosity. And this is, this is thanks to curiosity that mankind has progressed, uh, that we made discoveries, uh, and you live in the world uh, that you know today with all its technologies, uh, including your precious uh, smartphones. And I will leave you with a quote uh, from uh, Bernard Doucet, who got the Nobel Prize for Medicine in 1947. There is no applied science if there is no science to apply. Thank you.